Good afternoon, fellow race nerds. Uh, a couple of you have expressed interest, um, some questions in how I went about uh, designing, building, wiring, soundproofing, whatever the case may be, um, my rig. I figured I'd take a few minutes today and kind of walk you through it. Um, this will be a haphazard video, I'm sure. Um, I'll cover as much as I can. If you have questions, feel free to shout. Start from the bottom up. Uh, actually, we'll start with an overall view of it. Uh, I'm not gonna pull it out of the corner. It is fairly tucked in there in its current position, uh, which makes removing it a little more challenging than normal. Um, I will show you. The entire thing is on carpet sliders. These little guys underneath the butt kicker feet that I'll get to in a minute. These make for a pretty easy job uh, sliding the entire thing. I can one arm slide it fairly easily. It requires a little bit of muscle, but it's not so bad um, to, to suck it out. Um, when I get to wiring, I'll talk about how my cables are managed. Uh, it might not look like they are managed particularly well back there, but that's all loose wiring so I can pull it out uh, when I need to. So starting from the bottom, we got the carpet sliders, uh, and then we have these butt kicker isolator feet. There are four of these mounted to the P1X uh, original feet. They sit a little bit lower than the P1X feet. These are the 120 pound uh, weight capacity versions, uh, which means I have a total of 480 pounds uh, that can sit on these safely. Uh, if I am 170 pounds, the seat is 85, the whole rig as a whole is probably north of 100. That leaves me uh, a little bit of wiggle room to put, let's say, a more th girthy individuals in here in the future. Uh, continuing with the uh, sound dampening, uh, on the seat rails, I have two of these uh, little, maybe three quarter of an inch rubber dampers. Um, they are directly into the 4040 profile which was a little bit difficult to do because I couldn't get them with the right um, distance of threading. You need about a 15 mil thread, I think, to fit without bottoming out in the 4040 profile. Uh, so I had to Dremel them. I had to mark each one of them and then cut them with the Dremel and try not to melt the rubber in the process. Uh, I tried it. <sighs> I tried it originally with just one on each foot for a total of four on all four feet. That wasn't enough. The entire seat, if I can do it one-handed, still has a little bit of flex uh, under braking, especially with the, the weight level. I run on my brakes, there's probably 150 pounds of force required to, to hit 150, or 100, ugh, rewind, uh, to hit 100% um, on the brake. Uh, so it does move. That is an unfortunate evil. I would love it to be completely static, um, but that can't be the case when I have uh, damping in. Uh, I do have four big shakers uh, in the setup. I'll go through those in a second. But with this damping, three of the shakers are here. I'll go through them in a second. Um, so they're double damped from here and from here. And the other one is up under the pedal deck. Um, this is where the rig is. That is where the bedroom is. I can successfully race this, um, fans notwithstanding, uh, while my wife is sleeping without much issue. Um, the sound of the pistons panging against the, against the top and bottom is louder than the amount of vibration getting through to the floor. It does a very effective job. I did look at trying to do like a broader strip of sorbethane here um, to reduce the height of it so that there would be less chance for shear um, and a rocking motion created under braking. But all of my calculations said that that was going to increase the amount of vibration penetrating through the rest of the rig. Uh, so for shakers, I have the one, bend the GoPro back a little bit. I have one kind of hung underneath the pedal deck that handles uh, front suspension, front tire slip, front tire lock, uh, impact, uh, and surge. Uh, and then in the back, I have, um, Mounted to a plate, there is a butt kicker LFE, um, mini LFE mount under here. You probably can't see it, but there's three connection points right there. Uh, I had this uh, 
quarter inch, three eighths inch steel plate, custom fabbed um, to adapt from the three three drill pattern to the four of the butt kicker advance. And then I ran a little bit of VHB right here just to stop any vibration. Um, if this worked its way loose, vibrating over time to stop any vibration from clattering metal on metal right there. That shaker handles RPM and gear shift only. Uh, and then underneath, I have two butt kicker LFEs. Those middle posts right here are not connected. So these are floated independently on either seat rail. Uh, and they are directly as close to underneath um, the center of the seat as possible. Um, those do a pretty good job. You can feel separation through them. Uh, and those are the, the LFEs, the big boys. Um, but still, not much of that makes it through, through the seat. Um, seat belt. Um, because I'm using the GS5, I do want to be strapped completely back. Um, I have tried five point seat belts and uh, six points and four points. This is what I've ended up using just for the ease of use. Um, you put it on like a backpack. It's just one buckle in the middle, shrug it on, tighten it down. As long as you have the angles right down here, um, the seat belt is pretty directly beneath where it's going to cross your lap. As long as you have the lap belt tight, it's not going to pull up on you. I had originally experimented with it being further back and the tighter you'd get the shoulder straps, the higher it would hike up until it was like up near your sternum or someplace that it wasn't supposed to be. Uh, seat geometry rocked back roughly 15 degrees. That is as far back on the mounting holes of the GS5 as I could go. Uh, and that seems to be a good racing position for me. Um, I think I've got some pictures in the Discord about um, general geometry, but that is hugely important and something I've spent a lot of, a lot of tweaking time trying to get exactly right. Uh, moving up on the other side, um, the shifter assembly, I have the sequential, which is the SimWorks um, Pro Supercar Series one that has a big control box right here with this linkage arm. Uh, running through there. That is mounted to two, let's say, four inch pieces of uh, 40 series profile that are mounted uh, with a vertical brace here and this brace going horizontally on the outside edge. That is so in the event I need to slide that forward or back, I have the clearance to do so. You can see I do not have a whole lot of clearance against the seat, just barely enough. Um, I had to take the P1X shifter mount and float it another 40 millimeters off of another piece of profile out to fit this in here. Uh, I then took the handbrake, put it in more of a sports car position, not a rally position, which is not ideally what I would want, but what fit um, to be able to get all three of these in here. And then the uh, ProSim H pattern I have on uh, two, maybe four to six inch long pieces of 40 series profile. Um, all of those have cables routed through some kind of centralized channels. Hopefully you can see this with the sun over here. Um, I have these little twist in 40 series connectors and then I'm using black zip ties everywhere on the rig. You can see a prodigious use of black zip ties just to tie little bits of cable together. Uh, power supplies you'll see here, you'll see the one for the Simu Cube there, and one that appears to be losing its VHB bond right there. Might need to pull this out and reapply VHB there. Um, those are all just stuck to the outside of the profile. Whoa. Looks like that one's losing it too. Um, through VHB, which is something I think everyone should have a big roll of somewhere in their bag of tricks it looks like looks like this get in two different widths i've gone through three or four of these rolls entirely it's just a really kind of dense maybe eighth of an inch thick rubber super high bond uh, double-sided tape that is what's holding 
this on, that's what holding my button box on, all of these um, power supplies, etc. cetera. Um, let's see, pedal deck is as high as it can possibly go. Uh, I'm on the very top rail with these um, dampeners in and the general height of the GS5, which is quite tall. I'm already higher than I want to be off the ground in the seat. Uh, so I have to have the pedal deck as high as it possibly can be to have just about an even plane between the bottom of my ass and the bottom of my heels sitting down in the rig. Uh, and that seems to work out well. I have a little bit of uh, 40 series profile underneath the nose of that just to hold the heel plate up because the HPP heel plate kind of wants to rotate forward. It's a let's call it a mediocre design. Um, a lot of stuff uh, in the rig, these fans right now, uh, one and two, I'll show the back as much as I can in a minute. And the tablet are held on by RAM mounts uh, and they're just mounted into this 40 series profile. RAM mounts are made for marine and automotive applications. They're ball and socket joints, but built to withstand very heavy load. Uh, they don't move, they don't wiggle, uh, and they're really good for even very high vibration applications here. Uh, and you can point them wherever you want. So with stuff like the dash, where you want it pointed directly at you as much as you can, uh, you can do that. There are some limitations in how much they can twist because the, the ball and socket has a collar around it that only allows it to move maybe, maybe 20 degrees off to one side or the other. Uh, I have the kill switch for the for the semi cube there, uh, power supply switch for everything that needs power when I start the rig, fans, uh, power supplies, etc. Over there, button boxes, everything's labeled. I'll give you a slow pan of what exists there. Uh, and then the stream deck, I'll slowly pan through that so you can see it as well. Uh, and then when I'm racing, I'm using this mod mic when I need a mic on that can handle wind noise. Um, that is just stuck to their little magnetic mount. And then I have the other magnetic mount on my headphones right there. So it's out of the way and low profile when I'm not using the microphone. Um, down here, you can see. I have the USB hub. Um, all of the cable routing is gone through to there. That is run through a powered USB 3 extension cord to the main computer. Uh, I have it mounted in that position very specifically so that I can see these little um, notification lights that tells me what's connected. USB hubs in general seem to be error prone. I would say, I don't know, once every 30 times I start up the rig, one of them fails to work and I have to plug and unplug that particular cable to get it working again. I've tried a number of USB hubs and that seems to persist through all of them. Um, button boxes, shifters. Um, the cables from the GS5 I have wrapped in this neoprene sheath that just Velcros on either side and then zip tied at either end. Um, so they don't loosen. Uh, a lot of the cables down here, even the loose cables that need to expand as I pull the rig out and kind of look messy if you're looking back here. Uh, what am I saying? Kind of look messy. Uh, they do look messy when you're looking back here. Um, those are still zip tied prodigiously to hold them in place. Um, on the heel rest, I did add a strip of grip tape, just skateboard grip tape to where my heels sit on that to stop them from sliding. Uh, I would love to add that to the brake pedal in particular because I still get a little bit of slip on that, but um, it doesn't want to stay put. It just slides off after a few races. Uh, and then my router is back there um, mounted to the wall as well because I ran out of space. On the back of the rig, as much as I can show you from my current vantage point, um, that is the Arduino that is powering the fans. Uh, I just had to put in a bigger power supply, which I'm using these, um, what do they call them? Channel lock 
connectors to splice those together. And then cables again are zip tied down um, where they need to go up the monitor support arms. They're just zip tied in place. Uh, same with down the back side of this. And if you can see up the inside panel here, um, generally just trying to band them together, put a zip tie around them loosely, uh, and then tighten it down to the point where it's not quite, but just barely biting into the, the cable sheath itself. Uh, and then, oh, let's see, is there anything else back here? No, I don't think so. Um, you can actually see my pedal spacing. I have deliberately pretty widely spaced like this. Uh, I race a lot of open wheel cars, even in GT cars and older cars in iRacing, I don't think there is a gearbox that requires you to really heel toe um, so you can get away with having them further apart like this, which for me at least reduces testicular torsion uh, when sitting for hours at a time with your feet pressed together, uh, potentially constricting whatever happens to be in between your legs. Uh, over on this side, I have um, just a kind of a, a little custom wood platform that I made out of some IKEA cabinet legs and the tail end of this desk that I just built. I cut a foot off of this end and turned it into a little correctly sized amp platform for these um, amps and then an iPhone cradle slash key charger there. And these turn on when I hit this switch right here and they're wired to all of the shakers. Uh, the shakers um, are all banded together in wiring and sent down through um, those cable ties and zip ties down there. Uh, and then I happen to have my name on the back of the rig um, that my neighbor Alex was nice enough to make for me um, with his CNC machine as a practice project for himself. I think that is everything. So, uh, if you liked this, feel free to, to let me know. I'm happy to make more of them. If you uh, didn't like it or still have questions, let me know. And I am happy to, uh, to accommodate wherever I can. Lord knows I've spent a lot of time working on this in general. Uh, and I have a lot of knowledge to share and I'm always happy to do it save people some time and effort and going through the mistakes that I made. Um, oh, one other thing before I go um, that I didn't mention, this does not come with a P1X cockpit. That's just a 120 by 40 series profile that I added to function as a foot rest um, when my feet aren't all the way up on the pedal deck. And that will do it. Thank you. Enjoy.